For the past few weeks, there's been this thought experiment in the back of my mind that I want to share with you. What if we created a country on the blockchain? Let me explain. So there's many infrastructure projects in the blockchain space going on right now. There's EOS, Tezos, Ethereum is working on a more scalable version. There's Definity, probably a bunch of other projects that are working on this blockchain computer, meaning machine or network or infrastructure that allows us to execute large scale applications on a decentralized, fully transparent, immutable network. And because there's many projects working on this, it's quite likely that one of them will succeed within the next year or years. So one thing I like to think about is what do we do once we have access to that technology? What do we do with all that computation power? What if that becomes available to us? And so at one point I thought, what's the biggest that we could build? And one of the biggest constructs or institutions in our lives is a state or country. So what's wrong with current states? Well, I think they're completely random and outdated. You're born randomly in any certain place and that's where you receive citizenship. These nation states, or I like to call them infrastructure states, because that's really what they're based on, geographies and the infrastructure structure within those geographies. They were built hundreds of years ago when people didn't travel and there was no globalization and there was no way to connect with people from all over the world. Citizenship is extremely random, but shouldn't citizenship or being part of this community be based on your values and your interests? Years ago, that was exactly the case. You were born in one place, you spoke the same language, you interacted with people from your village, from your state, or maybe from your whole country, and you got together, you formulated common interests, and you defended those interests against people who didn't have the same interests or didn't speak the same language. And that's why we have wars and we have borders and so on. And it's not that I think we should get rid of these nation or infrastructure states. I think they do a great job at upkeeping infrastructure enforcing law in a certain geography and so on. But there's also so many areas in our life that are not physical. Education, most of the economy is not physical and many more areas. So why don't we rethink that part and see if we can provide something better, create something better. There have been projects in the past where people try to reinvent the state. There's Liberland, Somaliland and probably a few other projects that tried that, but they're all still based on people. So the whole organization is still based on trust and a large apparatus of of government apparatus that is a large overhead. And I think the time is now because now we're getting this access to this blockchain technology that allows us to create the most direct democracy in this world and connect people with common interests and values and give them an opportunity to share and connect wherever they are and whenever. Because what is it that we want from a state and very often it doesn't work like this in the world? We want trust, no corruption, we want transparency, we want efficiency. Overall, we want a direct democracy. We want the state to make the decisions that are in the best interest of the people that live in the state. So let's think about this. What are the components that we need for such a community, state, whatever the actual legal framework will be? What do we need? I think for one, we need an economy and that can be based on a token. It can have a banking system that's completely based on smart contracts or decentralized apps. It's an insurance that is completely based on this decentralized infrastructure and that's how we're gonna work financially we'll we'll have private accounts we can create companies i'm not saying all the physical companies will go away but there's so many businesses in today's world that are purely virtual and so it just makes sense to create this framework for them where they can operate globally in a framework that's not attached to anything physical what are other areas we would need um probably education is an important one i think that could be a great one to bring to this like second layer state the education system is also as random them as citizenship nowadays. Think about it, you send your kids to that school that's closest to you and it's randomly assigned to a class or a teacher based on which year um, your kid goes to school, right? But we all know teachers have a huge influence in our lives. So why are we trusting something so such a random process with such an important decision in our lives? While on the other hand, we have online courses that have been viewed and reviewed and refined by millions of people that we could use. They're perfectly fine to teach someone how to build stuff, how to understand math, algebra, uh, computer science, and so on. Now, I'm not saying we should remove physical interaction with people. I think that's an extremely crucial part, but I think that can happen independently from a math class. That can happen in sports, or even if it's just like community gatherings where people learn how to get along with each other, even maybe not just same age, people with with each other but like across different age bands so I think there's a it's a very interesting thought experiment to bringing this like outdated state idea to the blockchain time see what we could create on the blockchain and how we can make things better I said at the beginning I don't want infrastructure states to go away and I mean that I think 
they're doing a great job at keeping infrastructure updated and we need local law enforcement and all that. So the way I'm thinking of this is like there's a second level blockchain country that kind of exists independent from any geography and it interacts with all the nation states or infrastructure states that we have today based on where you are in the world. Typically I would be paying taxes to one country, right? I'm a Swiss citizen, I'm a Swiss resident, so I'm paying taxes in Switzerland, even though I spend a lot of time abroad. Um, but that's where I spend most of my time. That's why I pay taxes here. Isn't that unfair? to a certain degree? Wouldn't it be more fair if I paid taxes based on where I spend my time and how much infrastructure I use from which whatever country? So let's say if I'm in Switzerland, I should be for 10 days. I pay taxes for those 10 days when I use the Swiss infrastructure. But when I'm in the US, I could pay for five days when I'm in the US. And I feel that would be a much more fair system. The way I could see a business model work, but again, this is why I'm posting this video. I have no clue how it's going to work or how big or how reasonable this is all is. I'm thinking I would be, so if I'm a citizen of this new state, I pay taxes, but those taxes will be much lower because there's no infrastructure cost. And even more importantly, there's no overhead. There's no large government overhead that eats up a large chunk of my money because it's all code and maybe a few very selected processes that include randomly selecting citizens to make a decision. But there's no president, there is no large government body or people that only work in government. We're all citizens and we all make sure our interests are represented in the way the state works. So I'm paying taxes to this new blockchain state and I'm paying infrastructure taxes to whichever state I go to. And that's much more fair. It's based on where I actually am, where I actually use infrastructure and there's no discussion. Also, I don't wanna pay for a lot of the stuff that my government currently uses the taxes I pay. War budgets, military, and a bunch of other stuff that I just don't think is money that should be spent in that way. So there's a bunch of projects out there that are currently thinking about this or something similar. Most notably, I think is BitNation. They are building infrastructure or code or frameworks to create states and embassies on the blockchain. And there's Somaliland and Liberland and other state type like experiments that are trying to create a new country. And then there's also e-residency in Estonia, which is a traditional infrastructure state, but they've realized that people live a much more digital, global, virtual life nowadays. And they've created this ability to become a resident without ever going to Estonia. And that residency allows you to do a number of things and most notably create companies as well in this virtual environment, which is super interesting. So as I said at the beginning, this is a thought experiment. I don't have a game plan for how to do this, but it's been something that's been going on in my mind and I've been questioning the idea ever again and again. I would just be interested to get your feedback, to get your ideas. What do you think of it? Do you think it's interesting? Do you see there's clear downsides to this or things that make it impossible? Let me know. Super curious to keep the conversation going and uh, with that I'm out.